So we are going to want to, all the forces that we have been describing, we have talked about different types of force, gravity, normal force, tension force, friction force, and there's, um, I thought there was some more, spring force, all these forces that we've been dealing with for application of Newton's law, um, up application of Newton's law um, um, for exam one. Um, so, we, so we want to categorize those forces into two different uh, distinct categories. What we are going to call conservative force and what we are going to call non-conservative force. And I think this is the example we ended the class with last time. Um, I gave the example of one conservative force, gravity. So if you have a ball and I throw it up and it comes back to my hand, uh, this is an illustration of how gravity is a conservative force. Do people remember? Yes? We did end the class with this on Tuesday. And I used the example of friction as an example of a non-conservative force. So when I push this cart on its side, not on its wheels, when I push it this way, then the, so as this cart comes to a stop, that's an example of how friction is a non-conservative force. And I don't think we got to, yeah, we ran out of time there, so we didn't have time to talk about what makes a force conservative, what makes it non-conservative. So let me write down those two examples on the board so that we have something concrete to think about. So gravity is an example of gravitational force, is an example of conservative force, and friction is an example of non-conservative force. And what do you think is the big, um, well, actually, uh, let me do it this way. Let's go through more examples and try to figure out if they're conservative force or not. So let me write down the whole list of uh, all the different types of force we've been dealing with so far. We've been dealing with, so gravity, friction, and we have a few more. Um, Tension force, spring force. Anything else I'm forgetting? Normal. Normal force, thank you. Normal force. Anything else? I think in terms of types, of this might be. Let me just write down one more as a category of sort of applied force. So. Let's uh, try going through each of these and see um, if they are conservative force or non-conservative force. So gra gravity and friction, we already put them into these two categories. Tension, is tension a conservative force or non-conservative force? A lot of people think it's conservative because you are thinking of this. I have a pendulum. And, or I'm going to have a pendulum. And so here, tension force is in action, right? And this was one of the examples of conservation of energy I used on Tuesday. When I uh, hanging to the side and let go, so tension force is acting the whole time, and you see the energy being conserved, so you want to associate this with the conservative force, right? That's where your intuition is coming from. What I want to tell you is that tension force is actually not conservative force. Let me illustrate. So I can actually put more energy into this ball using nothing but tension force. Right? I mean, so my hand was moving, so you have that. But the way that force was applied to this ball is through tension force alone. So, so on this ball, nothing but tension force is acting. But using nothing but tension force, you can change the energy of the ball, which means this is not really a, a tension force is not a conservative force. So let me put tension force down in the second list here. Um, what about spring force? So spring force, so, um, I guess, um, yeah, so you're used to thinking of spring force and tension force being similar. They are different in one particular way. Um, 
So if I hang this here, yeah. if I hang this here, and you know there's tension force acting on this somehow, and if I hang this spring here, and hang a little bit of mess there so that it's not just a spring. So in many aspects, these two forces, you're used to thinking of them as similar. They are both a pulling kind of force. But there's one important way in which tension force and spring force are different. Can anyone tell me what that one important way is? So with the spring force, there's a mass. But I could have hung, you know, I could have hung well another mass here. So it's not a matter of how much a mass is hanging there. But actually, as I'm doing that, maybe you will notice something. So let me hang more masses here. So I'm going to hang more masses here. Watch what happens to the string here. And let me hang a little more mass on this spring and watch what happens here. Do you see an important difference between the spring and the tension force? What's the one important difference? Yeah. With the spring force, you see the change in length. So with the spring force, you have a way of telling how much force I'm applying. In fact, we haven't gone into detail about the spring force, which we'll do later today here. But what, the way I've been using spring so far in class was I was using this to illustrate how much force I was actually applying. So, um, so that's one important difference between spring and the tension force. With the tension, no matter how much force I'm applying, you won't really see it. I mean, the string might break at some point, but until that happens, or until it goes completely slack, you, don't, you can't tell from this picture if uh, how, how much tension force there is. And that will be an important distinction when we actually go into what makes a force conservative and what makes it non-conservative. So with the spring force, let me put it in the category of conservative force. And we'll see that the property I was pointing out here will be important in determining why spring force is conservative, whereas the tension force is not. All right, two more forces. Normal force and apply the force. I guess um, one of the ways I would apply force is through normal force, but. Um, so normal force. Is normal force a uh, conservative force? Yeah, so a lot of people are, so normal force and tension force, I think the intuition that a lot of people have for these two forces are similar in that you see these forces in a lot of contexts where energy seems to be conserved. So you associate with this energy being conserved, which is not wrong. As in, uh, let me give you an example of example involving normal force where energy is conserved. So I have these tracks. So when this ball is on this track, there's normal force between the ball and the thing, right? Now, if I start the ball here and you know let go, then the motion you see, well, I mean, you know, it's going down because of friction, but imagine ignoring friction. When you imagine ignoring friction, then the motion you see is consistent with the conservation of energy. Right? So that's why a lot of you would want to associate normal force with conserv you know, conservation of energy. But watch this. I can actually put energy on this ball using nothing but normal force. Right? So normal force can be used to put energy into this ball. And what that means is normal force is also not a conservative force. And when we get to the actual criterion that makes a force conservative, you will see that more easily. So normal force is not a conservative force. Um, and the final apply the force, I'll just give you a quick description. It's a sort of. What I mean by apply the force is force like this one. I have this card here right now, right? And right now, you know, there's gravity and normal force acting on the card. Its energy is not changing. When I say apply the force, I mean, you know, really apply the force. Like if a question tells you a force F is being applied on this card, either by, my, by me pushing it, or it could be by me, you know, using friction. So there are different ways I might be applying the force, but the idea is that, um, there's some particular force that's specified on this uh, 
cart that's not given by that uh, that's not um, that's not necessarily from one of these forces, but the problem simply tells you there's some external applied force of force F. And when you look at this example here, um, it applied the force also doesn't conserve energy here. This cart right now has zero kinetic energy. And once the cart, so it starts moving because I'm applying a force. So when it starts moving, then now it has non-zero kinetic energy. So um, so the any kind of applied force would also fall in the category of non-conservative force. So applied force. So we have these two big categories of force. And um, so I should tell you this now. Actually, these are the only conservative forces you will see in this class. There are no other conservative forces you'll see in this class. Um, so what I wanted to uh, go over was, given that this short list of forces is conservative, why are these conservative forces? What's the criterion that uh, we use for saying that a force is conservative versus saying that a force is not conservative? As you think about that, I want you to think about the example we used on Tuesday. So example of friction and gravity. It's a simple example. Um, it, it sort of helps you think about what it means for this to be conservative. So here's the sense in which friction is not conservative. When I, um, so you know, this cart, let, let me have it start out with some kinetic energy. I push it. So it's moving. Let me actually do this with a block. I think it's safer with a block. I keep worrying that the cart will fall over. Uh, so when I push this block, it starts by moving, but then it quickly comes to a stop. Why would you, um, what would you blame for this coming to a stop? Friction. friction. Specifically, what does friction do that causes this to come to a stop? Well, friction actually doesn't resist apply the force in, so I apply a force for a very short amount of time, and for the rest of the time, I'm not applying any force. So the friction is not resisting apply the force. Steven, you're gonna say something? So spring, uh, sorry, uh, friction force is what is converting the kinetic energy into thermal energy, yes. What's the mechanism for uh, that happening? The thing that we introduced on Tuesday, you had a whole lab about this. Work? Yeah, work. So, so we say that the friction was doing work. And uh, recall, from, recall from Tuesday that the thing, reason work is important is it ties into change of energy. In particular here, change of kinetic energy. So as the block is moving from left to right, friction is acting to the left. So the force times displacement is negative. It does negative work. It takes energy out of the block. Yep. So, so you could point to that and say, that's why friction is not conservative. So friction takes energy out of the block. Now, if you stopped there, then friction and gravity doesn't look all that different. When I throw this ball up, um, if you, when I throw this ball up, if you stop the motion right here, this is what you see. As the ball goes up, what kind of a work is gravity doing? Negative. Gravity is doing negative work. So look at the motion of the ball. Is what you see consistent with the gravity doing negative work and taking energy out of the ball? Right, right? So, so up to this point, gravity and friction, they don't look any different. They are doing negative work they're taking kinetic energy out of the object. Um, the distinction between gravity and friction is what happened next. So with the gravity, from this point on, uh, what kind of work is gravity doing? Positive, it's moving downward, and gravity is still pointing downward. So the kinetic energy that was lost on the way up re gets returned to the ball. What about with the friction? What happens um, after this block comes to a stop? Yeah, nothing happens. Wait, what happened to the friction force? Right now it's a zero, right? 
So the kinetic friction force that used to be pointing to the left, it's no longer there once the block comes to a stop. And that's a really what, that's the key distinction between a conservative force and a non-conservative force. And the way I like to uh, describe it qualitatively is that conservative force is predictable. As in, you can rely on it. You can predict what it's going to be so that when a conservative force does negative work, as this ball goes up, conservative force does negative work, we have some reason to believe that that negative work is not simply wasting the energy. That negative work that was done is stored the kinetic energy into some other form. And because the gravity is predictable, it's you know, pointing downward, constant. I have a reason to believe when the ball comes to a stop, gravity doesn't go away. It continues to point downward. So this ball, as it now moves downward, gravity starts doing positive work. It returns the energy that it stole in the first place. So, so that's really what makes a conservative force conservative. 